Hi everybody, Laura here. So glad that you're joining me today because I've got a fun, festive, and colorful project for the holidays featuring some of my favorite things, goodies. So let's dive right in. I've got this awesome stencil to begin with. The Drifts and Hills stencil, which is so cool. It's got four sides. You can rotate it. You get all different types of snow drifts and hills and curves and all that jazz. Everything you ever wanted in a Drifts and Hills stencil and more. Okay, so I've got a panel of Bristol paper. I'm on a Bristol paper kick. By the way, every time I ink blend, when I'm finished, I clean off my stencil. And um, I'm kind of, I'm not going, I wouldn't say this is rainbow, but it's what I like to call a holiday style rainbow. Because I don't do all the colors. I do red and orange. Here I wanted to stop because I got to tell you, um, I wanted to stretch out my red to the orange to the yellow. So I wanted a really orangey red. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing two ink pads. I've got these little mini distress inks. I think it's carved pumpkin and abandoned coral. And yes, I used the same ink blender and I just went back and forth until I got that perfect orangey red. First time I've ever done that, mixing two inks when I'm blending. But I gotta say, it won't be the last time I do it because I loved it. You can stretch out your colors. No matter what brand of ink pad you're using, try it, you'll love it. And um, okay, so I actually Googled, I went on Pinterest and I Googled um, Christmas rainbow because I thought maybe there'd be some inspiration like a variation on a rainbow that looks more Christmassy. I'm not sure what I was looking for, but it didn't help me at all. So I decided just to go with it. You ever go looking for inspiration, looking for mojo, and you and you just hit a dead end? Well, that's what happens. Sometimes you just gotta go, go with what you know. So I did what I like to call a holiday style rainbow, where you go orange, or you start with red, orange, yellow, and then you stop with green. Because you know, red and green are Christmas, Throw in a little orange and yellow. Ain't going to bother nobody. That's what I say anyway. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it. So I'm working my way through. I'm on to the greens. And I'm loving how this looks. It's very dreamy. I think you could customize this for any type of color scheme that you want to do. You could even do it just with one color. Just repeatedly over and over. Kind of monochromatic. Um, you could customize this for any type of holiday or occasion. So I'm going to trim this panel down. Now I'm flicking on some flicks of water, just using a really tiny paintbrush and dipping it in water. This is my Distress Sprayer, which I never actually use the nozzle. I just dip in my paintbrush and flick it. Moving right along, now I am die cutting a few snowflakes onto some vellum. I actually ended up die cutting six snowflakes and I like to use that retractable needle tool. Really helps you to pop them out of the vellum and pop out all the little pieces within the designs of the snowflakes. And then I'm gonna move on to the sentiment. I have this gorgeous Joy word die, which I love the handwritten scripty look of it. And whenever I use word dies, I like to die cut several of them, stack them up. It gives it nice dimension and really pops off your project. So I went ahead and die cut four of these out of Nina Solar white cardstock. And then I did a fifth with some glittered cardstock and I'm going to stack these up adhering them. I'm using spray adhesive. I have this Elmer's spray adhesive. I always have a scrap box on hand that I spray into. One thing I love about the spray adhesive is that you do have a little bit of play time that you can slide the die cuts around until they're aligned perfectly before it dries permanently. I never used to use spray adhesive. I used to always use Tombow Mono liquid adhesive, and I still do. If my die cuts aren't too um, intricate or thin, I'll, I'll pull out the liquid adhesive, no problem. But when they're like this joy, that little loop on the O, if I tried to put liquid adhesive on that, it'd be oozing out the sides. And mama ain't happy when that happens. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm adhering the vellum snowflakes. The only problem with vellum is trying to hide the adhesive because whatever you use it shows through a lot of times I like to adhere my vellum with stitching like I pull up my sewing machine I even thought about stitching on these snowflakes that would have been really pretty I just decided to pull out the glossy accents I put glossy accents on the back of my joy here and now I'm adhering the tittle you know what the tittle is the dot on the J it's also the dot on an I did you know that little little trivia for you I learned that a couple years ago somebody left a comment and said it's called a tittle 
And now I know. And I like to pass on that information wherever I go. So to hide my adhesive for the snowflakes, I adhered a few clear droplets right in the centers. Now I'm going to pop up my panel onto a white card base. And then just to finish it off, I'm going to emboss a sentiment from the Snow Globe Sentiments. Now I got to tell you, I used the October release quite a few times because I was a guest designer for the My Favorite Things Wednesday Sketch Challenge. So um, I probably used this Snow Globe Sentiment set almost every time. I would say it's my most used product from the October release. I love it. Classic font, can't go wrong. This project's finished. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you next time.